back at it again. We've got another one with Charlie Kirk. Absolutely love checking out some Charlie Kirk and, uh, you know, hearing his perspective on things and uh, absolutely owning some of these uh, young ones that have been sent to these indoctrination uh, places, facilities, whatever you want to call them. I mean, they're definitely indoctrination places for sure. I think most of us can comfortably agree on that. Uh, I, I recently even saw a post on Instagram that was just absolutely insane. Like a mother posted a picture of her daughter before college and then posted a picture of her daughter after she came back from college in Whoa, I might actually repost it. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. That link is down below in the description box. And with that being said, let's dive in. I've been pretty interested listening to your talk because you begin by saying that it's facts, not feelings that matter. Um, which, yeah, a anyway, yes. interesting. But yes. <laughs> And matter of fact, uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to Turning Point UK and Turning Point USA. All right. Make sure you show the show these guys uh, some major love and support. <laughs> um, listening to you talk, it seems that your rhetorical strategy is playing into people's emotions. I mean, you have a very angry style. And I'm not. I'm, what? I you should see when I really get pissed off. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, this is us calm. And it doesn't it doesn't seem as though you're presenting you're presenting a long series of different arguments. Um, it almost reminded me of a stand-up show, right, where you go from bit to bit, which was entertaining. Um, but I guess my question is, are you talking about, you say facts, not feelings, but do you think that your rhetorical, um, whatever rhetorical power you have, that it's coming from the feelings that you're creating in your audience? Or do you think it's actually coming from the validity of your arguments? So what are you saying, that our, our facts are creating feelings? Is that what, we're, what you're saying? No, it's, it's just this presentational just... style you have. It seems to be tapping more into feelings than facts. What? Right. So I wonder, how do you reconcile that with what you said at the beginning? Well, we're talking about facts, so I don't, I don't really understand what you're saying. You're saying that the facts are making people emotional? Is that, is that the well, argument? Yeah, I mean, so I don't look, really get what he's saying. I mean, I, I hope you, some people laughed and some people thought about issues a little differently, but that's the key thing. If thinking is your, if thinking is the gateway to feelings, then so be it. However, we used a lot of facts. She talked about black single motherhood. We talked about the de deterioration of the inner cities. I just rattled off a bunch of facts about the southern border, whether it be crime or drugs or illegal, you know, illegal immigrants coming in this country. Everything we have has a statistical backing and a logical reason behind it. So when we say facts over feelings and you're creating and sculpting public policy, we take a step back and we do critical thinking and reflection based on logical history perspective and good ideas, timeless ideas that can stand the test of time and natural rights and respect for the individual. Now, whether people find that funny or entertaining or when you play into it a little bit, I'm glad you find it entertaining. entertaining. That's good. I, it's good if the facts are entertaining. And obviously this is great. It's working. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's really the thing. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter if it causes excitement, but if we're saying is true and it's verified by facts, we're not up here talking about our feelings. I'm not selling a sob story here. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm backing, I'm giving you evidence for why I believe what I believe, why we believe all of these things behind us. Um, so I, I, I guess your question is really to the audience. You're asking them why they're getting excited, maybe because it's the first time that they're seeing their ideas reflected on campus. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you. Facts, and uh, Candace Owens definitely had a point there because we, we've checked out you know, videos of people on college campuses saying that you know, I don't feel comfortable you know, speaking out as a conservative. I don't feel comfortable saying, you know, hey, I support this Republican here. I just don't because of the environment. I fear retaliation, you know, for my teachers, which is just absolutely unacceptable. You know, the, 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 the audacity for some of these teachers to potentially punish these students that are paying their salaries, paying their salaries, Oh, I'm going to punish you even though you're paying me. Like, in, in what type of world? Well, I guess in our world, <laughs> apparently, you know, my statement wasn't even about to make any sense of what type of world are we living in. Well, this world, apparently, you know, that that's that's just crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. So, yes, when when you have a group of students who are hearing someone say what they've always wanted to say. Of course, they're going to be excited. That's to be expected, as they should be. They've been they've been ostracized and shunned into, you know, the far corner and told to be silent. Like that, that that's just you know what I mean? Like. 
the way that I see it, honestly, is um, we got to stop sending our young ones to these indoctrination camps. Especially in today's world where there's so much information out there. Now, obviously, there's some occupations that require a degree of some sort. So, you know, there, there, there's certain things that you, you, you can't really get around that degree. But if you don't have to, and I wouldn't personally. That's just my humble opinion. You guys can let me know how you feel. Obviously, I'm not telling anyone, you know, how they have to raise, you know, uh, you know, their their kids and whatnot. I'm just giving, obviously, my perspective and my opinion on it. And, and that is stop sending them to these indoctrination camps because that's exactly what they are at this point. It's exactly what they are because they aren't they aren't teaching anything. These kids aren't coming out, you know, vastly smarter than kids who 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 didn't go to college. And we've seen evidence of that in these videos as well. It's all been documented. You know, and then on top of that, not only are they not teaching them, but the stuff that they are teaching them, or I should say, not only are they not teaching them relevant subjects and top topics, the stuff that they are teaching them is total BS. They're teaching them to hate America. America is this horrible, terrible, no good, very bad place. Does America have a history that isn't so bright? Yeah, of course. Of course. We all know that. But what place doesn't? That's the real question. So if you're going to look down on America for, you know, some bad things in the past, you're going to have to look down on just about every country on this planet. So I guess we're all even. So what are we what are we talking about here? Let the past be the past and let's move forward. But of course, you know, that's that's too complicated to do these days, apparently. Anyway, let's jump into the second video that I have with Charlie Kirk. Let's check it out. What are your thoughts on gay marriage? I get, I get that, that question. question. I'm fine, fine with the laws in the books. books. No, no Why is there an echo? That's so weird. Preference. I'm not worried about the erosion of the... There must be like two mics picking up this audio at the same time. Because there's like an echo going on. And it's, it's not me. I promise. It's not me. I'm not worried about the erosion of the traditional family. No, I, am, I am worried about that. But I think it's very little to do with gay marriage and more to do with our socioeconomic government welfare programs that are subsidizing bad behavior and our our continuation away from Judeo-Christian values, which has very little to do with gay marriage. I mean, the divorce rate in the evangelical community is 58%, so. Which is just absolutely mind-boggling. Almost 60%. 60. I mean, of course, I'm rounding up a little bit here, but 60%. Now, I pose a question to you all. Why do you think it is so high? Why do you think that number is 60%? Let me know in the comment section. Now, he gave his, his opinion on it, but what do you think? Let me know. We evangelicals have very little to talk about when it comes to traditional values. Mm. Uh, do you feel like that's facilitated at all by socioeconomic inequality as well? Maybe, which is preceded by horrendous government policy that subsidizes that behavior. Such as? Such as welfare. So for example, we have single motherhood welfare, where a single mother will get a check, more checks, more kids she has. As soon as she gets married, she loses those checks. So we are literally subsidizing that behavior. It's been a core component to the erosion of the black family. So what about? I agree. No, I mean, what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, <laughs> is that the government subsidizes that behavior. As soon as you get married, you lose that check because we're trying to help single mothers. When in reality, we're incentivizing single motherhood. The single motherhood rate in the black community is 78%. It was 27% in the 1960s. It's absolutely vital we expose the far left in wow. our institutions and continue our work on campus and across the UK and in defending both free speech and conservative values. So yes. please help us by clicking the subscribe button Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go subscribe to Turning Point UK and Turning Point USA. They do some fantastic work. And obviously, we've checked out lots and lots of Charlie Kirk's and, and Turning Point's uh, videos. So definitely go show them some major love and support. They deserve it. They deserve it for sure. Um, 
but yeah, like 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 he was saying, it is subsidized, and I've witnessed it myself. I've 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 witnessed and watched people have a kid, and you know, you know, because you know you, you kind of know people. I mean, you're you you don't exactly know their financial situation, but you can make an educated guess, right? And so you're like, mm, that's gonna be a little rough for them. And then you see them have another kid. Like, wait, what? Then they have another one. What? What, what, what? what is going on? And you're like, yo, you couldn't even afford the first one. So I know you can't afford the last two. But of course, Uncle Sam coming in. Hey, here, here, here you go. Here you go, sweetie. Here you go, sweetie. Instead of saying, no, figure it out. Okay. And uh, the, the person that you laid down with, whomever that may be, don't matter, whomever that fella may be, you bring him to us and we'll make him pay. All right? And you both better be having a job and working 40 hours a week, you know, 50 hours if need be, two jobs. if Like, what, what happened to working hard? I feel like the previous generation didn't mind having two jobs. They didn't mind, you know, working overtime every day. But now, you know, a lot of all these all these little princesses and princes, oh no, I can't I I can't work that hard. That's 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 unreasonable. Unreasonable. Like what? Okay, if it's unreasonable, then starve. I mean that 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 I know on its surface, that sounds extremely harsh. Extremely harsh. And maybe it is too harsh. But at a certain point, you have to make people, you know, suffer the consequences for their actions. Right? Nobody forced, well, and if there was forced, then obviously we 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 know the ramifications of that. But besides those cases, no nobody's forcing these people to lay down and have kids. Nobody's forcing them to do so. You can choose to to not do it at all. You can choose to wear protection, a condom. I've even heard they got women's condoms, which I don't I don't know how that all works, but hey, more power to you. Protection. Protection, okay? Uh you, you've got birth control, you've got the plan B, okay? Whatever. Nobody's forcing you, however, to lay down and do the do to get your cheeks clapped. So for you to just recklessly have kid, couldn't afford another kid, definitely couldn't afford that one, another kid, for sure can't afford that one, and so on. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I just find that just absolutely mind-boggling and, and, and ridiculous. And kind of disgusting, honestly, with, you know, the, the, the recklessness with which people do that. Because those kids are going to suffer. Those kids are going to be raised in, 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 you know, not so great of conditions, not in the greatest. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not saying that people shouldn't uh, have the right to, you know, have kids. Well, you know, we can get into a little bit of a gray area with that because uh, we've all seen some just terrible parents had nothing to do with their financial situation, but just their terrible parenting skills were that was just like. Yeah. You know, we, we've all seen it where you just turn your nose up at it like, whoo, huh, you need some help. OK, um, but yeah, I, I mean, what do you guys think? What do you guys think is the true solution to this problem? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.